Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hester Biosciences Q2H1FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, Please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Mr. Abdul Qadar Puranwala from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Lizan, and good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I welcome you all to the Hester Biosciences Limited. Q2 and H1 FI24 earnings conference call. So today from Hester Biosciences, we have the senior management with us, uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, a CEO and managing director, Ms. Priya Gandhi, executive director, and Mr. Nikhil Jawal, CFO on this call. I thank the management of Hester Biosciences for giving ICICI Securities this opportunity to host this call. And uh, now I hand over the call to Ms. Priya Gandhi. Always to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Priya Gandhi, Executive Director at HESTA. Thank you for joining the call today, where I will be providing an overview of our performance in Q2 FY24. Commencing with a comprehensive overview of our financial performance, I am pleased to announce that in the first half of FY24, our standalone revenue surged by 20%, and our consolidated revenue saw a growth of 28%. However, speaking of Q2 FY24 specifically, we observed a slight dip in our standalone revenue by 8%. Uh, on a consolidated basis, we saw a marginal 4% decrease in revenue during this period. Delving into the division performance, uh, starting with our animal healthcare division, we've observed a 16% decline in sales during the quarter compared to the corresponding quarter. This decline can be attributed to the shift in the sales pattern of the Goldfox vaccine GPV. In Q2 FY23, a surge in demand for GPV was driven by an outbreak of the LSP, which is the lumpy skin disease in cattle, resulting in a concentrated sales for that quarter. However, this year, due to the distributed immunization program, the sales were spread across the first two quarters, thereby showing a higher differential in the compared quarters. This was about the division vaccine. Now, regarding the health product, the discontinuation of our brand Turex injection and Ismovet due to the change in the drug regulation prohibiting the use of ketoprofen for animal purposes has also impacted the sales of a health product in the division in this quarter. These two products collectively contributed uh, approximately five crores in the sales in the last financial year. In response to this, we have introduced a new product called Curex LA as a substitute for Curex, which got launched this month. And additionally, the substitute of the other brand that I mentioned, Isomovet, is planned to be la launched in quarter three. We anticipate these two products will help mitigate the sales loss resulting from the withdrawal of the mentioned brand in the, in the following quarter. Having said this, uh, it's noteworthy that the segment has experienced a 10% growth on a YTD basis. This growth can be attributed to the robust sales stemming from the government tenders for PPR and GTD, as well as an upswing in the sales in the other health products of the division. Now turning to our poultry healthcare division, we have experienced a 4% decrease in our overall sales in Q2 FY24. However, there has been a growth in the domestic sales after six quarters. But the decrease in the export sales has led to the overall decrease of sales in this division in Q2. Mentioning a little bit about the Indian poultry industry now, this segment has exhibited an upward trajectory, primarily driven by consistent consumer demand, mitigating the challenges posed by elevated speed and operational costs. Notably, the prices of meat and egg have maintained stability. About the pet care division, the segment has demonstrated a sustained upward trend, primarily due to the strategic expansion and penetration into, into our new territory. This segment has achieved a sales of approximately 1.8 crores and remains on a trajectory of growth. We anticipate the expansion of this segment uh, will be driven by the tier 2 and tier 3 cities with a particular focus on this segment in these areas. 
Speaking of the financial performance, we have maintained an overall gross profit margin of 69% in Q2 SY24. However, the EBITDA and PAT experienced a decrease of 24% and 34% respectively during this period. This decline can be attributed to several factors. Ongoing rationali rationalization of our product mix, the withdrawal of two feed, uh, products in the animal healthcare division due to changes in the drug regulations, and overarching strategic emphasis on increasing the sales of health products across both the divisions to tap into a broader market. Regarding product segments, our vaccine sales continue to be an important component of our business. In line with this, all states in India have initiated an immunization program targeting the lumpy skin disease using our GoFox vaccine, and we anticipate selling between three to three and a half crore doses over the next two quarters. Additionally, in Q1 FY24, we began the distribution of the PCR vaccine as a part of the national immunization program, which we have mentioned in the previous call. This contract entails a supply of 30 crore doses of CPR vaccine with a completion expected by October 2024. In the health product segment, uh, in response to the discontinuation of our two brands, as I mentioned earlier, which is Curex and ISOMOX, due to the change in the drug re regulation, we have launched new products to address this gap, and we expect that these new products will recoup the sales loss, which has arisen from the withdrawal of the brands that I just mentioned. Speaking of our subsidies performance for the quarter, Hester Nepal generated a turnover of 73 lakhs, given primarily by the domestic sales of vaccines. However, there was an overall net loss of 70 lakhs. Despite of the impact of the export and international tenders felt in Nepal, we are offsetting this effect by placing strong emphasis on leveraging on the potential of the domestic business over there, primarily into the poultry segment. Meanwhile, HESA Africa has sustained an export sales amounting to crores in Q2 SY24. However, the overall financial performance has reflected a loss of 4.9 crores, primarily attributed to the foreign exchange fluctuations on borrowing, as well as the weak purchasing power of the African countries in the public as well as the private sector. Having said that, it's worth noting that our Africa plant is now equipped with six registered vaccines, and an additional five vaccines are in process of being registered by the end of this financial year. The long-awaited harmonization of the registration process is currently being implemented. This will enable us to promptly market our vaccines to the other East African countries. Moving forward on an overall basis, uh, we are dedicated to introducing enhanced solutions to improve products, both in the form of vaccines as well as health products. Within the animal healthcare se segment, we are set to launch a line extension of one of our flagship products under the brand name of Protein C. This growth and productivity tonic was, is a significant contributor to our sales and it generated a top line of 10 crores last financial year. The modified, this modified version will be indication specific, featuring refined ingredients to yield even more promising results. In the poultry segment, we are in process of launching a modified version of the Newcastle disease vaccine, a crucial element in the poultry health. This version of product will optimize performance and deliver superior output with plans for release uh, by quarter four. Furthermore, we are gearing up to introduce line extensions for our two of our products within the pet care division as well. These additions will fall under the nutritional and the parasite, uh, parasiticide category aligning with the forthcoming seasonal demands in mind. Additionally, we are focused on enhancing our operational efficiency, both in the field as well as in the back end. We remain committed to honoring our commitments to all our stakeholders, both within our organization and externally. Our dedicated efforts are aimed at ensuring that we not only meet but exceed expectations as we continue to work hard towards shared goals and objectives. Finally, although our bottom line may have been affected, and it may concern you all, but our contributions in supplying vaccines for the immunization of cattle against the lumpy skin disease and for sheep and goat against the PPR disease have played a crucial role in enhancing the health and well-being of livestock in our country. It not only supports the food security initiatives in India, but also uplifts the livelihoods of small-scale livestock farmers in the country, thus making a positive impact on India's agriculture and economy. This accomplishment is a source of pride for all of us at HESTA and our stakeholders. 
With this, I complete my presentation and thank you all for joining me out patiently. We look forward to your questions and discussions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Keshav Garg from Counter Cyclical PMS. Please go ahead. Sir, I'm trying to understand what is the outlook for the coming uh, second half of the year uh, and what kind of recovery in our revenues and margins do you see going forward? Uh, yes, sir. good afternoon. This is uh, Rajiv Gandhi here. Uh, I will take your question. It is uh, outlook on uh, the age to the second half of the year. Am I right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there has been a little bit of uh, slip in um, in our margins, and uh, due to the exports, there has been a hit uh, because uh, countries have not been able to import material, and thereby our exports have been impacted. Uh, we are looking towards uh, the exports picking up, the poultry industry picking up. Both of these, we can't go lower than this, so both of these seem to be picking up. As well as from Africa, also we hope that uh, one or two products get registered in the nearby countries and we immediately start the sales. Uh, so these are a few things that uh, we are at the moment looking up to. Uh, would you like to quantify uh, what kind of revenues and margins we can expect for the second half? Our focus is definitely on health products where margins are a little less than what they are of vaccines. But we would like to offset that percentage by a quantum actual jump in terms of INR. So that would uh, be able to offset that for sure. Uh, so that's something which we are looking at. It would be inappropriate for me to give exact financial figures at this point of time on these aspects, but uh, things seem to be turning around as far as exports are concerned is all that I can tell at this point of time. Sir, and also in our consolidated number, the finance cost has seen a quantum jump from 2.5 crore in first quarter to 8 crore in the second quarter. I understand this is due to currency fluctuation, etc. So, so going forward, this is expected to again come back to 2.5 crore level? Uh, yeah, just a minute, our CFO will answer. So, uh, this finance cost jump which is coming up is primarily because of the the loan which has been taken in dollars in the African uh, entity. And uh, there, there has been a significant fluctuation which has arrived in this quarter. Uh, it doesn't seem to be having the same trend in the subsequent period because this is a significant jump. It's one shot it has happened. Uh, but uh, obviously, it may not be 2.5, a bit higher on that, but not in the range of uh, like 8 crore thousand happened altogether in one quarter only. Sure, sir. Uh, uh, sir, uh, thank you very much in this sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, <coughs> please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Vivek 
Tulsiyan from New Mark Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, if you look at our uh, animal uh, segment uh, on a quarter and quarter basis, the bit margin uh, as reported on the consolidated numbers has improved quite substantially from about 8% to about 31%. Uh, what is the reason for this uh, sharp improvement in the last quarter? Uh, your voice is muffing. Uh, uh, so, uh, Prime what you are asking is, uh, in our consult results, the animal health care, uh, uh, the result has been 94 million against a sale of 328 million, which is almost like uh, 30%. And uh, mm -hmm. against that, earlier it was 91 million against 378 uh, million revenue. Correct? Is that the question? No, I was asking uh, compared to last quarter, the June quarter, it was 24 million on a revenue of 310 million. So there's, there's a, that's a very sharp uh, improvement in, in margin. Oh, okay. Uh, June quarter, you are saying? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, we are not able to understand your question. Uh, I, what I'm trying to understand is if you compare first quarter margins versus second quarter margins for the animal health business, there is a very sharp improvement in margins. So I'm just trying to understand what is the reason for that. See, uh, what has happened is, uh, you see, we have already started the sales in Africa continent. And with that, uh, there has been uh, uh, the revenue which has been generated in Africa, okay? That has given the benefit uh, into the segment result. Okay, African uh, finance cost is sitting in unallocable on the finance cost side. That is the reason, though Africa has made a loss, but still at the EBITDA level there are positive trends. So that is one main aspect which has been increasing the profitability in segmental revenue in this period. Yeah, but if I if I look at the press release, the Africa revenue was quite similar in the first quarter compared to the second quarter. It was about 18 million in first quarter and 20 million in this quarter. We are looking into it. We are, we are just a bit confused ourselves. Please wait. Uh, Mr. Tulsiyan, are you done with your question? Uh, he's done with his question. We have not been able to understand the question. Uh, what we can do is that on a, uh, uh, you know, after the call, he can uh, talk to our CFO or send an email and we will address it because <clears throat> we are not able to really understand what is he asking. So we'll talk to him offline. Uh, sure. sure. Uh, sir, I have this one more question, and that is more uh, <clears throat> longer term in nature. Uh, if you if you look at our historical numbers, our uh, uh, our EBITDA margins were in the range of about 35 uh, percent when we were largely a, a vaccine uh, driven uh, 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 business. But now, uh, you know, the mix has changed towards health products as well. Uh, what would you say would be the I understand current margins might be lower because of, uh, you know, our investment in pet care and some of the other uh, uh, issues in Nepal and Africa. But uh, if you exclude that, what would you say would be the normalized uh, margin given the mix now of uh, pet care, uh, of uh, animal health and vaccine uh, is about 50-50? I think... Uh, oh. What we hope to do that in three years' time, we should come up to the margins what we had earlier on uh, a plain uh, vaccine business because by the time we would have gained a lot of traction, our sales team would be performing very efficiently. That is definitely one of the goals as mentioned by uh, Priya in uh, um, wanting to increase the efficiency as even mentioned in our press note. So it is our desire objective to come up to those margins in the coming years in two to three years time. We yes. would not want to settle for lesser margins. Got it. This is helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star in one. If there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Yes, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Rajiv Gandhi over here. Uh, as always, we have tried to be as elaborate as possible uh, in uh, going through the working of the company. We shall continue doing so on our calls. Behind the scenes, all throughout every quarter, we are putting in our best to make sure that uh, we improve the functioning of the company, improve the governance of the company, and with the now we have a specific objective to improve the profitability, the bottom line of the company. As stakeholders, please be rest assured that uh, we are in that direction. Ups and downs do come, but uh, that's part of the journey. Uh, not that we are trying to uh, justify anything, but uh, we are on track and uh, we hope to again speak to you in the next quarter and probably we will have some few additional things to talk on. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference Thanks. call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.